Now, when you think springtime wildflowers in the Sonoran Desert, the most common flower that you will find is coming from this plant right here. One of the most common plants in the Sonoran Desert, the brittle bush. And uh, now, while it's not necessarily an annual wildflower to the extent that, you know, you think of with uh, some other flowers, but this is kind of the predominant flower that you will see out on the roadsides and out in the desert right here, brittle bush. And it's, it's one of the most, uh, it's like the foundational plant in the Sonoran Desert and in many deserts. It ranges uh, from northern Mexico all throughout the southwest of the United States. These guys can live up to 20 years old and uh, they, they're called brittle bush because these stems right here uh, as they dry out in the summer will become brittle and just break off. And um, so that's where that comes from. They're a member of the sunflower family uh, they, they, they're usually found about 3,000 feet and lower, and they can go all the way down into the low desert. And they love the sun. They're also used to help uh, prevent erosion, uh, which is pretty cool. And uh, the Spanish friars used to use it for incense. So you can take the, some of the woody stems here, you get it down here, dry them out and burn them and it'll make a great smell for you and it was used it was used uh for like a like a glue and from the by the natives and also as uh even a, a for toothaches so it has medicinal value and really it's the it's the, it's the uh the main yellow color of the Sonoran Desert in the springtime. I mean, it's the most common of them all, and it's gorgeous. Brittle bush. One of the other uh, really common flowering plants that we see out here in the springtime in Arizona and, and throughout the Sonoran Desert is coming from this guy right here called the Chuparosa. And the Chuparosa is, uh, it means the hummingbird bush. Justicia Californica. It's one of the it's it's uh, one of the northernmost species of the genus Justicia, which is a tropical uh, plant type. And right here in Arizona is its northernmost range. And the hummingbirds and the other birds love this guy for for its uh, sweet sugary nectar. And you can see how a hummingbird could be able to get their uh, their beak in there and get out. All the goodness and they're real they're found oftentimes in like little river uh, river beds creek beds and you can see it just where I'm at right now uh, meshed in with all of these brittle bush but they're a really awesome plant um, and the plant really depends on uh, hummingbirds for pollination as well so they're the, they're intrinsically tied to the hummingbird, and they're all throughout these areas. And in the in the when the in the summer, they'll cut, the flowers will burn off, and it'll almost turn into more of like a succulent-looking plant, and it'll even look dead at times of year. And then it just bounces back springtime, and these beautiful red flowers, just so cool. This here is one of my favorite wildflowers of the Sonoran Desert. It is the purple desert lupin. Uh, it's part of the very large lupin family, which, uh, you know, there's a lot of different types out there. But this one is a native uh, annual flower. So it comes up self-seeding, and it comes up every year on its own. And then will kind of get burnt out by the sun. And... Uh, they're fantastic, and you'll find them all over roads, especially on roadsides throughout the throughout the desert, where water accumulates and kind of uh, along roadsides and, and little culverts. Um, they're native to the Mojave, the Chihuahuan, and the Sonoran Desert, 
uh, and they can grow up to 30 centimeters. You see them all up and down this little hillside here. They're all throughout here. Um, they're part of the pea family, and they're a favorite of bees. Lots of different bees use different varieties of bees uh, are using them to uh, get their nectar, and they're self-seeding. And their, po their, their seed is actually poisonous, so you don't eat them. But they're just fantastic. All right, the next one here is the desert marigold. One of the more common wildflowers you will see here in the Sonoran Desert. With my buddy here, Cedar. Cedar likes them, don't you? Yeah, buddy. Desert marigold. Their, their range is in northern Mexico and southwestern United States. Um, they're a remote relative to the true marigolds, so they're, it's not really a, a, a great name for them. But they're short-lived annuals, so they come only one. You know, they come back every single year. These this will eventually burn out and self-seed itself, and come back when when the rains come in the spring. Uh, they grow up to 10, 10 to 30 inches tall. Uh, and they just have this most beautiful gold flower with these silvery green stems and foliage on the bottom. Um, some birds eat their seeds uh, and gr they grow from the low desert uh, all the way up to 6,500 feet. And they're home to butterfly larvae, very, very common where the flower itself will just kind of ball up, and that's because um, Caterpillar took it over and started doing its thing. Uh, one of the really cool things about the desert marigold is recently some, uh, some Arizona State researchers have extracted compounds from the desert marigold that help slow cancer uh, tumor growth. So this guy is a magic plant as well. The desert marigold. Here's an awesome patch of those desert marigolds. They seem to kind of come up in clusters as well. Makes sense with self-seeding flowers. This is a really big, big one. You can really see the silvery green foliage and stems. It's really pretty. Desert marigold. Now this here is my favorite of all the wildflowers here in the Sonoran Desert. It is the Desert Globe Mallow. Uh, and there's a, whole, there's a whole bunch of varieties of, of Globe Mallow. Uh, but this is the desert one with the orange, orange flowers on it. That's a real big one. Uh, and then there are some with even different colors, but the most common the most common color is this kind of creamsicle orange. Orange is my favorite color, so I've always had a strong attraction to this plant. Every spring here in the Sonoran Desert, popping up. I can remember even when I was a teenager, since I was a teenager, being out here in the desert and seeing these guys. Um, they're, they have perennial varieties, which uh, many of these are, and then annual varieties. Um, and so uh, the, the main, the main bit, this big guy over here is a perennial variety. It'll stay uh, throughout the year. It's uh, found in southwest United States, uh, northwest Mexico, found in the Sonoran, Mojave, and Great Basin deserts. So the three of the five U.S. deserts, you will find the globe mallow. Uh, it's a larval host to many butterflies, which is pretty sweet. And the natives used it to treat diarrhea, sore throats, and eye diseases. The roots were used for upset stomachs. And the flowers are edible. You can eat them. And they're self-seeding. As you can see, they must have had a good year last year, and then all the rain this year. And the desert globe mallow looking just absolutely stunning. <laughs>